Hi all and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a humongous supply haul. I think to date it is the biggest one I have ever done and I'm also including aspects in the supply haul that I don't normally do. Um, I do a lot of crafting on top of painting and drawing and so I don't normally include those portions in here but I figured why not? You guys might want to see what all goes into this. Um, this supply haul is from Dick Blick, Amazon, and Michaels. I believe those are the only three stores. Anyway, let's get right into it. So starting out, I have a huge supply of white shirts, varying sizes, both for my four-year-old, my six-year-old, and myself, and then some zip-ups for them. Uh, what I like to do is these I'm actually going to be doing tie-dye. We've talked about it for a couple weekends now and so bought a bunch of white shirts so we could try a few different patterns. I bought a tie-dye kit, I don't know, like a year ago and I still haven't used it. I've never tie-dyed before. I'm sure that I'm going to mess it up and like, I don't know, end up with blue hands or something. And then uh, the zip ups, what I like doing with those is I will design something on my iPad and then I'll cut it out on vinyl and just make them more fun zip ups for when we're camping or for them going to school just so that they have something that's uniquely theirs. Um, so those and then I had also bought some hats, just a black one and a white one. And ooh, I guess I had bought two white ones. Uh, same thing. I uh, like taking vinyl and putting those on the hats just for something fun. I had also thought about taking one of these white hats and like painting on it. I've done it with shoes before. I've done it like with a bag, like a canvas bag, but I thought that doing it on a hat might be kind of fun. Use some like actual acrylic paint and then the uh, golden like heat 900 or whatever that stuff is. And uh, yeah, so hats. And then, oh, I lied. So this is from Joann's. So I bought some fabric. So I really like making scrunchies. And so I was going to make some nice satin scrunchies just to try and protect all of this hair. <laughs> and then from there, it is going to be kind of, oh my goodness, I have more shirts. I forgot. Okay, so same concept. But I love this color. I'm kind of obsessed with this color right now. So vinyl something and then another white uh, shirt for tie-dye. I wanted us to be able to do a bunch of different colors. My youngest is uh, in love with a tie-dye shirt that he did through school. And so I figured, why not? It's not like white shirts cost that much. Anywho, okay. Uh, this is going to be kind of all over the place. I should have like organized this <laughs> based on where I bought it from, but I just kind of threw it in a huge pile and figured I'd go from there. So the next step is really tons of like fun little craft paints. My kids like painting rocks. So I bought I don't know. One of everything. I will take a picture because I feel like that'll take less time than showing you all of these. There's a ton. I mean, I just figured it'd be easier. They can like glop it on a uh, paper and uh, or like a paper plate and then we can keep painting rocks. And so uh, I got some more kneaded erasers. I have these always in the paint or the drawing pack that I take with me on a travel pack. Um, but my uh, oldest, Wesley, has done some drawing sessions with me uh, at the coffee shop and wants his own kneaded eraser instead of always having to use mommy's. So got a pack of those. And then I bought this set of watercolor brush pens. I bought this on Amazon. I have not yet tried it out, but watercolor is something that I've always been super intrigued with. I always think it's so beautiful, but I hate the lack of control, or maybe it's just because I don't understand it or I haven't used it enough, but yeah, this is my way to be able to do watercolor 
but without using like watercolors. I think it'll give me more control. I'm assuming it's gonna be similar to like using an alcohol marker pen or an alcohol marker, um, but that this is water soluble. I don't know, thought it would be fun and figured worst case scenario, if I don't like it, I'm sure Wesley will love it. And then I have bought, I have uh, been painting a lot. I know I haven't posted much. I'm so sorry. Life has been crazy with finishing school and kids and summertime and weddings. You name it, it's happened. Um, but I painted a lot. I'm behind on uploading videos. I will make sure I start doing a better job on that. Um, but had a bunch of wires to be able to do the back hooks for my canvases so I could paint those and paint those. They were already painted, hun. <laughs> uh, so I could actually hang those up after they are varnished and ready to go. So huge, like, I know some of these are opened. I couldn't wait. I needed to actually get stuff hung so I could display it. I think that's all of them. So those, I know I have a new stack of staples as well, but they're over there. Once again, had to use some of the supplies prior to actually being able to show you the whole smorgasbord of them. And then I bought a bunch of the golden paints. I will also take a picture of these because there are a ton of them, but I had bought the golden fluid acrylics um, in various colors. I've found that having a less heavy body paint has been great, especially since I've been on such a time crunch when I am painting. I haven't had the time to be able to just like make them more liquid. And it's an expensive way to be able to increase my efficiency. I could have done this myself. I could have made a fluid acrylic on the acrylics I have, but I was lazy, so I bought a bunch. And then I did also buy some normal golden as well. There were a few colors that I was getting low on and I always get really nervous about being low on paint. Although I will say I really shouldn't have because of the fact that I have, I don't know, spent quite a bit of time here trying to like reorganize my studio. And in doing so, I realized how many <laughs> duplicates of stuff that just was like buried in my paint drawers that I couldn't see so I didn't think I had so I bought another one and yeah it's a problem <laughs> so I did buy this only to find out that I already have that same with a few of the uh fluid acrylics I they were buried in the back of the drawer and I now have multiples so that's that uh I had also bought a big container of the golden matte medium just so that that way when I am uh, sketching on a canvas I can be able to put some matte medium down so it'll hold those sketch lines in place prior to me beginning the painting portion uh, depending upon the medium and I guess really for me any medium I use whether it is pencils or like a uh, regular graphite pencil or a like color erase pencil it always bleeds through with the paint a bit so this is a way to hopefully alleviate that going forward so I don't have those colors or that graphite blending into the paint that I am doing and then let's see what should I do next I'll open all the stuff from Dick Black. okay so I bought a bunch of canvas. I am actually not going to show all of the canvas because between Dick Blick and Michaels, they were doing phenomenal canvas sales. And once again, I don't, I shouldn't have bought paint because, uh, or I shouldn't have bought canvas because I found in reorganizing my studio, I had had my canvas separated out in like two sections and yeah I don't need canvas so this these are like the last round of canvases you guys are going to see unless I need like a special size which I have a whole round of canvas like up on top of my shelf I have a whole smorgasbord of like bigger stuff over here but I really don't I feel like I have about every size <laughs> available anywho so I bought these 16 by 16s really like this 
And then actually I'm going to skip over to, yeah, I will skip over quick to Michael's, what I bought there. So there are a couple 11 by 14s. I really like the gallery wrap edges. I don't know why. I just think that it looks really attractive when it's pushed off the wall a little bit more. I have nothing against traditional wrapped. I just, I don't know. I think the gallery wrap is really pretty. And then a couple 12 by 12s. So those are just the few canvases that I will actually show you just because of the fact that like I have bought a lot lately. Michaels was doing a buy one, get one free. I mean, and you could do as many renditions of the buy one, get one free as you wanted. So I went a bit overboard because <laughs> it's a smoking deal. Anywho, um, oh, there's more of those paints. And then I did buy a new uh, golden open thinner. So I do have some of the paints once again. Just wanting to uh, make it a little bit easier. Having those already uh, more fluid or still open paints that um, don't necessarily dry as quickly helps in the painting process. Especially when I have such short sections where I'm actually able to paint. And actually looking at this thing. So I had uh, used... I have a like, I don't know, projector stand, I guess. And I'd used it to hold my palette one day and it is really convenient. I don't know what you guys all use for your palettes. I normally use a uh, like picture frame cause I like the glass, I like the size. I think it's an 11 by 14, but I ended up buying another one because being able to have this adjustable size to hold my iPad. So I have my reference photos right next to my paintings, huge. Cute, like so nice. It is a game changer for me. And then anyway, <laughs> I digress. Uh, I also bought a bunch of, and a, by a bunch, I mean, I bought four, which I mean, I is a bunch. Okay, so I am getting ready to do another sketchbook. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I always have multiple sketchbooks going at once. Like I almost always find like a theme for a sketchbook and then like go with it. I rarely have sketchbooks that are just like full on random. Um, but I would love your opinion on what sketchbook I should start next. So I have the uh, Stillman and Burn, the Zeta series. I am actually in love with this brand. It is a very like the Zeta series. I like the paper. I like how responsive it is. Maybe I should do a like sketchbook comparison. You have to let me know if you guys would want to see that because I do switch around different sketchbook brands just because I can always find almost, you know, something in each of them that I'm not a huge fan on. Um, anyway, I have not tried this one yet as far as for it's the hardbound. I do gravitate towards hardbound, but it is the smooth surface paper. So there's sketchbook one. Uh, sketchbook two is the Illo sketchbook in the 8x8. I have used this sketchbook before. I love it. I love the size. I love that it is hardbound. Um, and then it has quite a few pages on it. I do like the color of the pages as well. I uh, gravitate more towards like a bright white paper. And then I have never tried Etcher. So I got a hot press Etcher look at that and in a much bigger size than is normal for me and i don't believe that this is a bright white paper but it is smooth so there's that and then now i did already start this one um i couldn't help myself i believe this is a letterum 1917 sorry if i pronounced that wrong i probably did but also has oh goodness Oh no, I obviously did not lock that in place. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, and then this is also bright white paper. So I guess I don't really need to start this one because I've already started it, um, but I needed a sketchbook and um, yeah, I started that one obviously early. So for these three, I'd love for you guys to tell me 
uh, what one you think I should start next, uh, or if you'd like to actually see a review of the ones that I've already used. I definitely have my thoughts on this one, um, but maybe I'll save that for that video. So sketchbooks. And then continuing on, um, I also bought some stretcher bars when I was at Dick Blick. Um, and this was because I had recently had some uh, paintings of mine actually printed. So both on paper and on canvas. And so just wanting to be able to actually uh, stretch my own canvas at home and try and save on that fee versus um, paying somebody to actually do it for me. So got those so that, that way I have them. Um, and those are two 24s and two 18s. Uh, we'll see how well that goes. And I think, let's see, that's all paint. Ooh, I would love, ooh, <laughs> there's so much stuff in this pile. Um, anybody ever go on a painting spree or a shopping spree when it comes to painting and just kind of forget? Deals on art supplies always get me. <laughs> okay, I digress. I bought, um, I really wanted to try doing like calligraphy, but with a calligraphy pen. So I had bought this speedball in the C flat and then this ink. I don't know if either of these are good. I haven't had a chance to really mess around with it a whole lot. There is a pen somewhere in here. Oh, there it is. Okay. I did open it up because I wanted to like try a couple lines just to see what my thoughts are. I don't know if this is a good brand. If you do calligraphy or if you sketch with ink, please let me know what your thoughts are because this is not something I've ever really used before. So I, I don't know like what the good stuff is. So I just picked these honestly, because of the fact that somebody else in the aisle picked them up and I was like, oh sweet, they use it. So maybe it's good. <laughs> anyway, if you have thoughts on what I could uh, use that might be better, or if this is like the creme de la creme, that's what I'd love to hear. I don't know that that'll be the case though. And yeah, that is literally all paint. And then I did get a variety of brushes, but uh a lot of them have already been used and so I'm not sure <sighs> oh, how many over there are actually new um, but I did do quite a few new brushes because it went back to there were just smoking deals on the brushes oh forgot about this one from Hobby Lobby a very nice one for being able to do some finer lines um, it says that it is a script brush, the 2050 script brush. Um, I do like the Master's Touch uh, brushes from Hobby Lobby. If you haven't tried them, I mean, I feel like they're pretty comparable to the Princeton brushes. I can put them through the ringer and they are still, still chugging along. All right, next up is this Hemi gouache set. I got this on Amazon. And I'm really excited because it's supposed to be like a good travel set. But the thing that makes me really worried, and this is without having opened it, is how it came. Like, look at that lid. How wet are these paints going to stay if that's how the lid is? I'm hoping that it just got jostled on its way here, but it came with a cute little mixing section a couple of brushes and then all your colors i'll probably do like a little unveiling of this but i thought it was a pretty Here, let's get one of these out maybe i should get an easier one out like that's a good amount of paint for a travel size that's it i mean in comparison to my other gouache set i wonder how much bigger it is Bet that that's actually pretty comparable in size but much fewer colors anyway than my other gouache set and definitely lighter but I will not lie when I say that I'm a little concerned at this also doesn't have a rubber seal my other gouache set and I'll make sure to link that but my other gouache set 
does in fact have like a seal around the edge and this is literally hard plastic. So how well is that actually going to keep the liquid liquid in and not like overly dry out those paints? Let's see if I can get this lid on better this time. But still, so let me see if I take the white part out if that helps. Drink. Or hopefully the real issue is the fact that they still just have their little pudding cup tops on. And so that's creating too much of a barrier for it to really like cinch down low. So I took this out and you still see that there is a hefty gap around the sides. Kind of bums me out. I really hope that once I actually open it up, we'll be good to go, but I will keep you posted. So this just goes back to wanting to be able to travel and paint and have something that's a little bit more practical than my huge, I think my set that I have is a 52 and it's hefty and huge and just not like super transportable. So anyway, let's go on to something else. Um, I think that's actually it. It took me less time because of the fact that I did not show you each of the paints individually, but there's still quite a bit. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful as far as for seeing kind of the stuff that I buy on a consistent basis. I wouldn't say that the fluid acrylics for me are something, at least previously, that I bought consistently. But I might start doing it because the uh, having it just liquid and ready to go and ready to blend is it's very appealing, especially on the time crunches that I've been on. Maybe when I have a little bit more time to actually designate to painting, I can use more heavy body or maybe I should just really set aside some time to turn some of my heavy body acrylics into fluid acrylics. That would be a thought. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you supporting my channel and being here and watching these videos and for all your likes and subscriptions. It truly means the world to me. I promise I will get better on actually posting more consistently. And yeah, I hope at the very least you all have a fabulous rest of your day. Thanks so much and see you again soon. Bye.